Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. Today I'm gonna cover whether it's possible to do a third fermentation. If you aren't familiar with what second fermentation is, it's basically when you bottle a properly fermented batch of kombucha and you add flavorings to it to make it carbonated um, and fizzy. So if you want a full in-depth video on what that process looks like and um, the steps that you can take to do a second fermentation, um, I have a whole other video dedicated to that, so be sure to check that out. Um, but I have been getting some questions about whether it or not it's possible to do a third fermentation process or whether it's advisable to do that. Um, um, and basically, yes, you totally can. So I don't really think of it as a third fermentation process as much as I think of it as basically just splitting the second fermentation process into two phases. So what I typically do is I add my flavorings and I bottle it all in one go, and then I let that bottle ferment at room temperature for a few days, one, to infuse kombucha with flavorings, and two, to build up carbonation in the bottle. I like that because it is a quick process you knock out the flavoring and the carbonation all in one step, and at the end of it, you get a bottle of kombucha that's flavored, but you might get some sediment or settling at the bottom that you can just easily strain out. A lot of home brewers don't like having fruit in their bottles um, when they're drinking it, and especially if you're using um, fruit pieces or fruit chunks, um, it's just another added step and you may not like having chunky bits in your bottled kombucha. So a lot of home brewers actually like to do a pre-bottle conditioning flavoring process where they take their uncarbonated, first fermented kombucha and they add their fruit flavorings to it in either the same vessel or a different vessel. And then after they let that sit for a few days to let the flavorings fully absorb into the kombucha, that's when they'll add it to bottles. They'll strain the fruit out and they'll add it to bottles and then they'll ferment those bottles at room temperature to build the carbonation up. So one process isn't necessarily better than the other. It really is just dependent on what your taste preferences are and what seems easier for you based on how you're brewing your kombucha. I happen to not mind having a little bit of settling and sediment and fruit pulp in my bottles as I drink them, but if you're the type of person where that's not really um, palatable to you, then it's totally fine to, before you bottle it, go ahead and strain your fruit out and then just have um, filtered kombucha that's fermenting and getting bubbly, um, that's ready to drink right out of the bottle. One thing that I will caution about doing about splitting up the second fermentation into a flavoring and a carbonation phase is that it does draw out the second fermentation process a bit longer. So if you're splitting up the second fermentation into two phases, um, you might be flavoring that kombucha in either an opened or a sealed container. But as that kombucha is fermenting and infusing with flavorings, it's still fermenting. So it's still getting more acidic and the sugar is going to continue to get eaten away. And that might be fine if you tend to like your kombucha on the drier side, but at that phase, once you take the fruit out and you put it into the bottles, you just need to be extra cautious about making sure that there is enough sugar in the brew at that point for the yeasts to eat and produce carbonation in the bottle. So if there isn't enough sugar in the fruit or in the kombucha, there won't be as much food for the yeast to eat to turn into carbon dioxide. So you may need to end up adding some extra sugar at that point just to make sure that the fermentation keeps going once you bottle. So it may be trickier to get consistent carbonation or a good amount of carbonation at that point because you've drawn out the second fermentation process. But again, it really is just kind of dependent on how sweet you like your kombucha, whether or not you're averse to having pulp that you need to strain from bottles and what your general preferences are. But but in a nutshell, yes, it is definitely possible to do what a lot of people call a third fermentation. Um, it basically uh, just requires you to strain the fruit out before you put it into your bottles. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or recommendations, feel free to comment down below. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow me at Kombucha. And if you have other questions or wanna explore other topics that I've covered, um, you can always find that at youbrewkombucha.com. Happy brewing.